Hello there, children. Thank you very much for joining me today. It's a bit chilly. I've got my woolies on here. And um, you've caught me while I'm just brushing down these little locomotives. I've got several brushes and I use different brush sizes to clean them. Ooh, a bit of dust came out of that one, didn't I? I was wondering if you have any hobbies. I want you to know that cleaning little locomotives is not a hobby of mine. I like reading and I quite like baking. Have you got any hobbies, things that you like to collect or do or make? Well, my boys, as I call them, my husband and my son, they really like anything at all to do with locomotives. And these are just some of their little models that they've collected and have in a display case. But now and again, I have to take them down and brush them, or they do. Um, sometimes we put a little spot of baby oil on the brush and it just brings out the detail really nice because I'm absolutely terrified of breaking them. Quite a lot of detail on them really. Now you see to me they all look the same but if I were to ask David or William they'd tell me all sorts about them and they'd also tell me which one is their favourite. It's a good word isn't it? Favourite. It's something you like the best. Well, as you're behind that camera, David, can you tell me which is your favourite of these locomotives? Well, I like all these engines. This is a Japanese one. Oh. That's the Flying Scotsman from Britain. That's an Italian one. It's a Belgian one. But this is definitely my favourite. This is a French engine. One of the last French steam engines ever built and the most powerful steam engine in Europe. 5,500 horsepower. <laughs> More powerful than any of the electrics of the time. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> so there we are. So that one there is David's favourite. Oh, don't drop it, Auntie Liz. You'd be in big trouble. Very nice too. There we are. So in our story today, we're going to hear about somebody who was a favourite. I'm just going to move those there. Can you remember that yesterday when we had our last story, we learned about Jacob and how he had 12 sons. Oh, imagine all those socks and all those shoes to polish, am I word? Um, so we're starting to see how this promise is looking like it's going to come true. Uh, the promise that God made to his grandfather that he would be the uh, father of many, many descendants. Well, we've got 12 boys here. And would you like to hear their names? Uh, we've got Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph and Benjamin. I wonder if you've got a favourite name there. I really like the name Asher. So 12 boys, he'd have had daughters as well. And it must have been very, very hard work bringing up all those boys. And especially as, I'm sorry to tell you, they didn't always see eye to eye. And you'll soon find out why when I read you the story. So Jacob and his family are back where they should be in the land of Canaan. But the jealousy and quarrels between his wives, he had four wives, and their children went on. Jacob was glad that he had a large family because all fathers needed their sons to help them with all the work in those days. But Rachel was the only wife he loved and he was very sad when she died shortly after the birth of her second son, Benjamin. So he's the youngest of the twelve. Little Benjamin was to be the last in Jacob's large family. Because of his love for Rachel, Jacob treated Joseph, her older son, as if he were really his firstborn, and, and he wasn't. He was number 11. Yeah, 11. This made the other older brothers very angry. Jacob gave Joseph a special coat. And there it is. And what was special about it was all the colours. It was probably more colourful than we're seeing in that picture. And also because it had long sleeves. And that was the sort of coat 
that a father would give to his eldest son. Ooh, and it made all the other brothers very angry indeed. Because Jacob loved Joseph so much, the other sons hated him. And they would go off to look after Jacob's flocks, grumbling and muttering all about him. Sometimes Jacob would send Joseph to go and see what they were up to. And sometimes Joseph would come back with a bad report. Well, that just made matters worse. The brothers hated Joseph so much that they stopped talking to him altogether. And when Joseph tried to speak to them, they paid no attention and went on laughing and joking amongst themselves. No one in that home was really happy. And then one night, Joseph had a dream. It was a very strange dream. <gasps> Do listen to my dream, he said to his brothers next morning. We were all out in the harvest field, tying up the sheaves of corn, and suddenly the sheaf that I was tying stood up straight and all of your sheaves bowed down around mine. Oh, it was great. Well, if Joseph thought that his brothers would be pleased and interested in his dream, he was sadly mistaken. Who do you think you are? they said angrily. Do you imagine we're all going to bow and scrape to you? Hmm. And not long after, Joseph had another strange dream. And this time, he told his father as well, all about it. I dreamed that the sun and the moon and the eleven stars were all bowing down to me, he said. Hmm, there were eleven stars and Joseph had eleven brothers. Poor, they soon guessed his meaning. High and mighty Joseph thinks we shall all have to treat him as the boss they said to themselves. Even Jacob, his dad, was a bit upset. He thought that the sun and the moon in the dream might be a picture of him and his wife. Do you really think that you will be more important than your parents? He asked Joseph. But although he scolded Joseph, Jacob did go on thinking about the dream. Could it be God's way of telling him that he had chosen Joseph to be someone very special in the family? Mm. So we've had about two important events, really, um, in Joseph's, he's only a boy in Joseph's life at this, at this point today. So we've heard about the cloak and we've heard about the dreams. It wasn't very wise of Jacob, was it, to set his son up over the older boys, was it? But the cloak does seem to point to his significance, his status, his importance. One day, Joseph will indeed be very high up, very powerful, and he will wear even more special robes than this one we were shown today in the picture. And his dreams seem to be about the whole family bowing down to him. Hmm, will that ever happen? Well. If we just keep coming back each day, we'll hear about what happens with Joseph. It's, it's an amazing story. Now, the story of Joseph, whose name means saviour, by the way, points to someone even higher than himself. It points to the one before whom all creation will one day bow. And his name is Jesus. So we're just going to pray now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these amazing stories about Joseph and many more to come. And we look forward to them, Lord, and we look forward to finding out things about Joseph and what they might mean for us. And Heavenly Father, we thank you that one day we shall all bow before the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Saviour of the world. We thank you, Lord, and pray that you be with us today in all that we do. Keep us safe, we pray. Amen. And now we're just going to do the blessing. Just the once. My hands are so cold, I'm going to have to go indoors. So, l -l the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you safe. The Lord give you his peace till we meet again. Amen. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.